Today I'm going to show you how to find the perfect center shot for your specific bow and your specific setup. It's called the dynamic center shot. So if you're new here, my name is Jake Kaminsky. I'm a two-time Olympic silver medalist in the sport of archery, and I'm working to make this channel a super great resource for all sorts of archery. I've got a form series, a tuning series. I'm working on strength training. I'm also working on a whole lot of other things to help make you a better archer. So if you want to become a better archer, start now and hit the subscription button and the notification bell. So that way you get notified every time a new video is uploaded. And I also noticed that over half of my viewers are currently unsubscribed. And if you subscribe, It'll help me because I get uh, the video out in front of more people and ultimately you're just gonna help this channel grow more and I would appreciate that. You're watching the Jake Kaminsky YouTube channel. So I'm sorry if the audio quality is not the best today. It's a bit windy, so I do have the lapel mic on today, so hopefully it won't be too bad. And I don't know if you can see the uh, the rooster that makes a noise all the time in the videos you hear in the background, but there he is making an appearance. The way that we're gonna find your perfect center shot is with a dynamic center shot. So the center shot that actually the bow is telling you where to set it, not where you just eyeball it at static center shot. So the way that I like to set it is using a method called the walk back method. So I'm gonna show you how to do it and it's actually very simple and it takes very little time. Doing the walk back method is very simple. You need a full size target bale, one that has a lot of vertical uh, space to have your arrows land on it. And I like to just take a regular 122 centimeter face and flip it over. So I flip it over because it's easy to just uh, use a blank slate. It doesn't have to be new. Oftentimes I'll use the target face that I've shot a lot of arrows at, but it's real simple. You just turn the target face over. You need a regular level. Uh, you don't have to have a four foot level. Uh, this is what I use because it is so simple to use. Um, this one's older than me and it's not really important how ugly it is. It's just important how well it works. So as you can see, this target is quite crooked. The stand is falling apart. It's about to fall over any day now. So I do have to rebuild it now that I'm shooting bare bow some more. So I've got to get back out here and rebuild a, a target stand. Anyway, because the target is not level, this is why you need a, a level to find the actual perpendicular line to gravity. So the first thing that you wanna do is you want to draw a dot at the top of the bale where you are comfortable shooting at without missing. So for me, I would be very comfortable putting the dot right here because when you are aiming at that dot and trying to hit that dot, you're only at 10 meters. You're not any further away than that. Um, you eventually go further away than 10 meters, but your arrows start landing down here. So you're not worried about missing at 10 meters up too close. So I draw a dot at the top of the bale, but it has to be big enough that I can see at about 50 meters away at my furthest point. So I draw the dot about this big. So that's all I need to be able to see my dot from 50 meters away, but I do fill it in. And when I'm done filling it in, it doesn't have to be perfect. All that it is, is something dark enough against this white background that I can see from far away. And then I take my level and I want to draw a perfectly perpendicular line to gravity. So a straight vertical line that is level. So I find my level on the actual bubble and then in the center of my dot, I draw a vertical line all the way down to the bottom. So that line is perfectly vertical thanks to this level. I don't have to worry about a plumb bob. It's not a big deal. And I don't have to use this anymore. I can put this off to the side. So this line isn't perfectly in the center of the dot. It's not really important because all that we are looking for is where are our arrows landing in relation to this line as we move further back without moving our sight. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to sight in for 10 meters after you draw this line or beforehand if you have no idea where your 10 meter sight mark should be. So you sight in for 10 meters and then you stand 10 meters away obviously because that's where you're sighted in. You aim at this dot and you shoot an arrow or two. Usually I only need to shoot one arrow because if I shoot two arrows aiming at the same dot, I start worrying about breaking my arrows or breaking my knocks. And I'd rather not do maintenance on my equipment if I don't have to. When you shoot at 10 meters and your arrow impacts the middle of the dot or somewhere near the middle of the dot, it could be right, it could be left, it's actually not extremely important. So you shoot your first arrow or two at the dot and then you take five to seven steps back 
or you can just go far back if you know exactly how far back you can go without missing the bale. So I generally don't say that you need to shoot an arrow, aim at the dot, take five to seven steps back, shoot another arrow, shoot another arrow, and keep walking back progressively. Really all I'm interested in is where my arrows land at 10 meters and where do my arrows land when I'm as far back as I can possibly be without missing the bale. So it's different from everybody's setup. It's different depending on how much weight you're shooting, how fast your arrows are going, how heavy your arrows are, things like that. So it can really affect how far you can go back. For me, when I'm shooting my X10s in a standard outdoor typical setup, I can stand about 47 meters away from this target, still using my 10 meter sight mark, aiming at this dot, and I can have a group down here at the bottom of the bale without missing the bale. When I'm doing my indoor arrow tuning, I can only go back to about 35, maybe 32 to 37 meters if I had to guess a range before I'd miss the bail because my arrows are so heavy and so slow when I set them up for indoors. You never move your sight when you're doing a walk back tune. You always leave it at 10 meters and you don't need to go closer than 10 meters and all you need to do is go as far as you can until you almost miss the target. If this is your first time doing a walk back tune, you don't have to just go back to 45 meters and hope you hit the target. Shoot an arrow and then walk back five to seven steps and progressively get back until you figure out how far or how comfortable you are with how far you are without missing that target bail. Once you figure out how far you can go back, mark that spot so you don't have to do the progression again because what you'll need to do is you shoot that arrow at 10 meters, leave it there, go back to the furthest distance you can without missing the bail and then shoot a group. I never suggest just shooting one or two arrows. You really need a group of arrows because even at 45 meters, I still don't have the tightest group in the world and I want to reference the center of my group because if I have one arrow that lands here, that doesn't do me a whole lot. What if I have another arrow that lands here and here and here and here? So the center of this group is right about here. It's off it's off the line. Whereas if my arrow impacted the center of the line up here, that's telling me my center shot is off. So how it, does it affect your center shot? It's actually a very simple uh, process to understand. And this doesn't matter if you are right-handed or left-handed, all you have to do is look at how the arrow is aligned. If your arrow impacts the line at 10 meters and your arrow impacts over here at far distance, that means that your arrow is angled too far this direction. So for a right-handed shooter, that would mean my center shot is too far in. If I was left-handed, that would mean my center shot is too far out. All right, and then the opposite's true. If your arrow's landed over here for a right-handed shooter, my center shot's too far out, or left hand, my center shot's too far in. Very simple. All you need to do is adjust your center shot to compensate. Once you do that, you'll have to go back and shoot another arrow or two at 10 meters, go back to your far distance and shoot another few arrows until your arrows do not deviate right or left of this line. How far off the line really is gonna depend on how far in or out your center shot is. And for your particular setup, it's going to change. So what you need to do is just do a little bit of trial and error to figure out how much you need to move your center shot in order to fix any sort of flaws in this walk back tune. In my experience, if I am roughly this far away from the line, that's about a quarter turn, maybe an eighth of a turn off of my center shot. Now, you might not think that a quarter turn or an eighth of a turn is a whole lot to be off on your center shot, and that's generally true. However, I found that just an eighth of a turn on my plunger center shot changes at least a half of a turn on my limb bolts to compensate for the change in tune because the arrow will be breaking down in spine in different ways with different center shots that are not dynamically set perfectly for your bow. If your center shot is not set correctly, chances are you're going to be chasing your tail and never end up having the optimal tune for your exact setup. So you are compensating for a center shot issue that you have with a stiffness and weakness adjustment. Instead of setting your center shot perfect and then your stiffness and weakness being perfectly in tune for the exact setup and not compensating for something else that's off. Now I do have questions from time to time that ask me, what about a curved line? So meaning if your arrows don't do this, you impact the center, you're off, you're off, you're off and off that's generally a pretty straight line. 
and that's extremely common. When that happens, all you do is just move your center shot towards the direction that it needs to go. But sometimes I have seen center shots like this. It's like a curved line. This would be a straight line. This is a curved line, or it'll deviate different directions as you're going back. So uh, if you're hitting, impacting left one arrow, right one arrow, left another, right another, chances are what that is, is you don't have a good enough baseline tune to do this. Earlier in this form series, I explained that you have to have a uh, specific linear progression from top to bottom, and if you don't, you'll end up compensating at the end to fix faults that you had in the beginning. I'll link to that video on the top over here, and there'll be a link in the description below. Plus, I'll also put a link in the description below to the bear shaft tuning video that I did recently, so you can check that out as well. In this curved type of situation, or the situation where it kind of zigzags back and forth, it's either the tune is not good enough at a baseline in order to do this because the arrows are flying like you know garbage down towards the, the target instead of flying like an arrow or a dart. So what that will cause is obvious different impacts as this arrow is moving back and forth it is at, as it is flying down towards the target. And the next issue that can cause this is clearance issues. So either your arrow impacting the arrow rest or the plunger as it's going by, uh, your string hitting your arm guard or your chest, something like that. When you have contact, that is really going to change the way the arrow is shooting uh, and really change the flight path and the flight characteristics of that arrow. Other than that, I've never seen anyone with a curved line. Anyone that has ever had a curved line, I have them fix those other faults and then the, the curved line goes away. So overall, a walk back tune for me really only takes anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes to do. It doesn't take a whole lot of time because it's just a simple adjustment. It's a simple fix for a very simple problem. And this is why I prefer the walk back method over any other tuning method that sets your center shot dynamically. It's just very quick and very simple. I've not found the plunger tension to really affect my center shot, my dynamic center shot a whole lot, as long as my plunger isn't super, super weak. And I never recommend shooting a super, super weak plunger anyway. Uh, you do need a you know decent range of stiffness within their plunger setting. And I'll be doing a plunger video here in the near future, so keep an eye out for that. I actually did a walk back tune with somebody locally here uh, where I live um, actually yesterday because I've started coaching people locally. So there's a, a slot on my website where you can contact me, especially if you're in the local area and you'd like to get together and actually work with me and help set up your bow, maybe works on some form issues or things like that. So I have launched on my website, which I'll put a card at the top here so you can check it out and write to me and try to schedule some sort of coaching with me. I also offer now digital coaching over the internet via Skype or some sort of video chat. And I do also offer coaching on my Patreon page as well, which uh, basically allows you to submit a video to me and I give you a video response helping you through whatever problems you have. So those are three ways that you can uh, work with me directly if you are local or coming and visiting the North Central Florida area, happy to work with you. There's a beautiful range just down the street from my house that uh, I'm working out of and working with people. So like I said, if you're interested, head to my website, which is just jkaminski.com. Thanks for watching, and thank you to my Patreon supporters. If you want to become a Patreon supporter or check out books, apparel, and some seminar info, head to jkaminski.com. And uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified every time a new video is uploaded. And I appreciate you watching. Thank you again.